Hi guys and welcome back to Fitwitty, I hope you guys are good. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your starting block and how to push out of them, so let's get into it. So if you haven't checked out my video about how to do the crouching start, I encourage you to check that video out before moving on to the starting block. That video is going to help you to understand exactly what angles you want your legs to be in when you are starting from the ground. And so the blocks is the next progression. So you're going to use starting blocks in competitions. For events 400 meters and below, sprinters use starting blocks. And so it's really important to learn how to use them and how to push out from them effectively. So I'm going to first of all show you how to set up your starting blocks. I'm going to give you general guidelines and then for you individually, you can work with the different settings to find your optimal starting position. When putting your blocks on the floor, you want to first of all make sure that your blocks are straight. If you are doing 100 meters, 60 meters, you want your blocks to be straight. When it comes to starting blocks on the bend for the 400 meters or for the 200, athletes will slant their blocks slightly towards the curve in order to get an optimal angle when they actually push out and to be able to run closer to the curve when they actually are accelerating around that bend but i'm going to talk mainly about having your block straight today as if you're running in a straight line when you put your block onto the ground measuring one pigeon step from the line you want to place the front of the block there that just allows you to have enough space possibly for both your front leg and your back leg it's just a good starting place your feet may be bigger or smaller and so you know you might find that another gap so a foot and a half and two feet may be better for you in terms of the gap between the front of the block and the line if you start with one pigeon step from the line and then what you're going to do for your front foot so in this video i'm having my left foot as my front foot and so i'm going to measure two pigeon steps from the line for my front foot which is my left foot so i'm going to do two pigeon steps and then place the front of the the left foot block at two pigeon steps and for my right foot block which is my back leg i'm going to measure three pigeon steps i'm going to place the front of the block at that place there so you've got the two block feet i'm going to call it in this video and you've got the frame so place the front of the frame one pigeon step from the line, then you're going to have your front foot, two pigeon steps from the line, and you're going to have your back foot, three pigeon steps from the line. This is the general guide for most people, just as when you did the crouching start from the ground, you did two pigeon steps and three pigeon steps. This is usually going to be the general distance for most people, and then you will just work around that to find to what's optimal for you, where you are most powerful, what's most comfortable, where you're able to push out and get the right angles, and the most explosions that you want in your start. Having measured two pigeon steps for the front foot and two pigeon steps for the back foot, you can actually adjust the block so that it can go to different heights as well. So as a starting place, you're most likely going to have the setting on the lowest setting of the block, head itself, so how high and how low it can go. The higher you put it, which will just adjust the angle of thrust that you will have. So the higher you place the block, each block head means the angle of your knee, you'll have a more horizontal angle. So the higher it is, the more horizontal your knee, your shin angle would actually be. And so for most athletes, the block will be on the ground, but you can adjust, as I said, according to your needs, according to your ability, according to your preferences, and according to what's optimal for you. But as a general guideline, two pigeon sets for the front foot, three pigeon sets for the back foot, and just to start with, keep both blocks on their lowest setting. Now that you have your blocks set out, you're gonna to wanna to stamp your block into the ground. If you've never seen blocks before, blocks actually have spikes on the bottom of them, which allow them to grip into the ground. If you're wearing spikes, then use the heel of your foot. If you're setting up with trainers, and then you're gonna put your spikes on, then you can use your trainers, but Usually in the competition, you're going to step on the block, the top of the block with the heel of your foot to stamp the spike of the block structure into the ground so that it's nice and stable and nice and sturdy. So when you do push out of it explosively, it doesn't move. There are times where, you know, in training, your block may only have one spike, no spike, you have to deal with that. You might put weight on the back of it so it doesn't move. But in competition, generally, you will find that your block will have all the spikes and when you push them into the ground, they will stay there for you. So now that your blocks are all set up, they're pushed into the ground, you're going to want to get into the block. If you are practicing block guide, you do need to wear spikes. I didn't mention that, but hopefully you guys are aware of that. You need to wear sprint spikes so that you can actually grip your foot into the block when we do go in to put our feet into the block. So where do you want to place your feet on the block when you're going into your starting position? The aim is to have your knees and your hands producing tension. They're essentially pushing against each other like this, so that when you do go, it's like a, a spring that springs pushes you out so you create all that tension store up all that power so that when you do explode that power is released okay so you want to push your feet into the starting block i encourage you to have all of your spike your sprint spike into the block head itself so onto the part that's either going to be track on the block or the ones i'm using are plastic in this video but 
blocks will either be made out of the same material that you find a track is made out of the same track surface like that or they'll be made out of a hard plastic but both allow your feet to go into the blockhead i encourage you to press your feet into the groove part so you see that it curves with your foot so you want to place the spike part of your foot into this section of the block here and you want to create that tension against the block and through your hands so that when you push off it releases that energy for you so you're going to have all of your foot on the block on both feet and you're creating tension in both feet when you push out of the blocks you want to push off with both feet not just with one but both of them but you're creating that tension through your fingers and through your hands they're pushing against each other so that when you do go into that set position you still have that tension and when the gun goes you can explode and release that tension that power into your first stride and continue in your acceleration so just as with the crouching start, you're going to have your hands behind the line, your shoulders over your hands. You're going to create a bridge with your hands using your fingers, or you may have them flat is how you ever you do it, but making sure that your, some people do it on the knuckles as well, to be honest, but making sure that your hands are behind the line, that you're creating that tension through your hands and your feet, ready for when you go into set and then explode out on the go. So pushing out of the blocks now, the idea is to get your feet down as quickly as possible whilst covering ground usually athletes will try to keep their foot low because that allows them to get their foot down as quickly as possible what you're trying to do is you bring your knee up and down creating a, a piston like action that you create in the acceleration phase and that will just transfer as you begin to if i was to do it like this piston angle this way and as you come into your upright running then the angle of the knee just essentially changes but you're doing exactly the same thing throughout all the run you're just getting quicker building up your speed and then at the end of the race trying to maintain that speed so you create all the tension in the block to push out at that horizontal angle trying to push punch that knee through think about punching that knee through and getting that knee back like a piston to propel you forward again so knee comes up foot comes down to propel you forward and you're trying to cover distance as quickly as possible whilst bringing that, that foot through up and down as quickly as possible you have to bring that leg through quickly but especially because of the angle that the blocks are putting you into if you don't bring that knee through quickly if you don't get that foot down quickly you will fall on your face and so it does take practice it does require you to be strong enough and powerful enough which is one of the reasons that young athletes don't use blocks because they don't necessarily have the power to be able to sustain that so you want to make sure you have to be aggressive with block if you're not using block efficiently or correctly blocks can actually slow you down and so you want to make sure you're in a place where you have the strength and the power to be able to push out of the blocks get your legs through quick enough and down and propel you forward on each consecutive stride so that you actually get the benefit out of being at a more horizontal angle from the ground than you are in the crouching stuff. So guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else that you want me to talk about with regards to starting from blocks, anything that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the video guys, please give it a big thumbs up to help me accelerate my channel, so let the algorithm know so that more people can see this video. And if you still want some advice about how to improve your speed and get faster, then check out this video and I will see you guys next Friday.